So we spoke a year ago, and so much has changed since then. Um, in our conversation, we dropped a, a lot of great information came out, really doing what you always do, mm -hmm. what we do when we talk. Um, speak about the industry, speak about artists, speak about Stockholm Syndrome yeah. with the labels, all of that. Um, <laughs> you, yeah. Yes. And then you dropped a song called Stockholm Syndrome. Um, yes. So pandemic's over, you're about to go on tour again. How are you feeling about things right now? Um, I'm feeling optimistic. I feel like, you know, for the first time in probably a year and a half, like the light at the end of the tunnel is getting a little bit brighter and closer. So um, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get back on the road. Uh, I know promoters really thought that post pandemic, the tickets were gonna fly off the shelves for a lot of these artists, but they're not. It's quite the opposite, so. Well, are you scary, serious? Man. Yo, by the way, I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. By the way, I did not know that. I thought it was all good. Yeah, nah, so like everyone thought promoters, venues, everyone thought like tickets would go crazy because people are like dying to get back outside. But I don't know, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the case. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. I'm not doing what I was doing before, but I know, I won't say any names, but there's really big artists who are having a really tough time selling 2,000 tickets that should be doing arenas, so. It's tough, man. Oh wow, 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 wow! I did not even, I did not, I did not know that. Um, I mean, we could go yeah. down like why you think that took place because people are spending more money than I've ever seen them spend in my life. I mean, people you know are just it, spending you know money what like it might crazy. Be? I I'm going to just guess. It might be the fact that everyone and their fucking cousin is touring at the exact same time, so it's like. You know, you might have money to spend, but do you have money to spend on 10 concerts this week? Like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, so, everybody tried to come out, everybody tried to come out the game, come out the gate fast because, you know, yeah. when you when you weren't eating for a year and a half, and a lot of artists that are signed to labels, they, you know, they got caught in the drought. They had no place to go. They had, they were de dependent on the label and all that stuff. Um, the only way they, for them to make any money was going on tour. While you, yeah, let's just keep it 100, was posting those receipts over the pandemic because mm -hmm. the checks was coming in. Yes, right? sir. And, yeah, and that's yep. what you were doing. Do you have a cadence when, when you put out music? Because I follow you and you drop music. Sometimes it's like every week and then you stop and then you put music out again. What is your cadence on when you drop singles? What, what, is it an energy? It's, what is it? Because I know you got a lot of songs in the vault. So when is it that you decide yeah. to drop them? There's always some sort of loose strategy. The top of the year, I was like, all right, I'm going to do a song in a video every month. And I didn't tell anyone that that's what I was doing, but that's what I, that's what I was doing because I just wanted to see what that approach would do. Because that, that's the beauty of independence is the freedom to try out different methods. Cause I was like, you know what? Let me see what one song in a big budget video does every month compared to a song a week. So now I'm going on the 11th week in a row uh, of doing a song a week. And a song a week is doing way better from an analytics standpoint than one song in video a month, which I'm not that surprised about. Song a week always works for me. You feel me? Yeah. So you told me, by the way, you, right I, you told me that three years ago when we first sat down at the restaurant mm -hmm, in Manhattan, mm -hmm. you told me about the song a week Yep. Three years ago was your thing. Do you use data? How like how much do you rely on data to run your business? And not really, not just using the word data, like really paying attention yeah. to the analytics in order to inform how mm -hmm. you do shit. From a touring aspect, uh, like that's all I rely on <laughs> is is data, you know. And then from a music output uh, standpoint. I rely on it to just kind of get feedback for like, oh, they fuck with this type of song more. Oh, this did better. This didn't do as well as I thought it would. But at the same time with music, it's a little bit trickier because you got to give music time to permeate and, and, and get around the world and stuff. Like, you know, if you put out a song and check back in a week and you, and you judge it off of that and off of those numbers, you might be playing yourself. You know, what my biggest song like that's performing right now is a song I put out five years ago. Wow. And it randomly started going nuts. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I always tell artists, you got to give every song three to five years, then you can judge it. <laughs> Until, look, well, look, you, at like, look at right now, right? 
Right mm -hmm. now, one of the biggest songs in the world is Beggin. This Beggin song by uh, some like rock band. It came out in like 2017. It's the number one song in the world. Yeah, as far as like streams on Spotify and shit. So it's like, you don't know, man. Just put out the music and, and, and keep it pushing, you know? And I remember you distinctly saying, and it's funny because when the people find those songs, that one song, mm -hmm. then they find the rest of your catalog like you're a brand new artist again. Right. And then the streams shoot right. up on everything right. else. Everything else, yeah. That's why, like, that's that's why there is no loss when you put out music because number one, it's understood that it's good. Like, I'm already just getting that out of the way. Like, we're, we're assuming it's good music, right? So if it's good music, it's impossible for there to be too much of it because all that's gonna happen is your fans are gonna be happy and you're gonna generate momentum, I think, on a spiritual and energy level within the universe and you're generating this momentum. And at some point, one of these is gonna take off and when it does, people, now you're at this new point of discovery and now they're coming back and doing their homework and they see like, oh shit, I don't have to even scroll down till 2018 to get his most recent album. He put out 30 songs this year and they're all fire. You know what I'm saying? And then as the months go on, mm -hmm. then they go deeper and deeper down the catalog. But it's like, that's how, that's how I've generated hardcore fans because any artist or any uh, consumer who discovers Russ at any point, at, at this point in life, you're either like, I don't fuck with him at all or it's, I'm a psychotic fan because there's so much music. So it's like, you're not just gonna find one song you like, you're gonna find 50. You know what I'm saying? So it's like mm -hmm. you're, you're an immediate hardcore fan off the catalog. When do you think artists will be looked at as businesses and not part of a business? When I, I, I'm always um, <sighs> impressed by the way you what discuss. What a fucking question. Yeah, yeah when you what discuss your business and you, know, you talk about analytics, you're looking at what's happening in the industry. You are teaching people about why ownership is important. You constantly talk about this and you've built a career being this guy. When will it turn mm -hmm. to like, yo, they should be a business, maybe a big business or a small business, but, an, but a business, yeah. not part of a business. I think it's gonna, I think it rests on the shoulders of artists like me who are running it like that and are aware that this is a business. I'm a business, I am the label and it, it's running as far as I can, <laughs> you know what I mean? And taking this independence thing as far as I can and, and being vocal about it as, as much as it might rub people the wrong way or okay, we get it, but it's like, nah, y'all don't get it. Clearly, y'all don't get it because y'all are fucking in love with your captors, AKA the labels. Y'all get online and bitch about labels 24 seven or we'll AKA talk Stockholm privately Syndrome. and oh, my label. Yeah, and it's like, okay, so then leave. Oh, well, nah, because I need, I need a machine. I, so it's like, all right, well, then shut up. <laughs> then shut up. Then don't complain. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't, even, I don't even understand that. You know what I mean? Like, which one is it? Do you hate your label and you feel like they're bullshitting you? And if so, then leave. But if you're not even willing to leave, then what does that say about you? So let me ask you this question. Do you feel that an artist that is signed to a major label in any shape, form, or fashion have an advantage over you? Yeah. Uh, sim where, do you, where do you see the advantage? The advantage is if you care about playing the game, that's the advantage. Meaning there are certain industry, uh, how do I say this? If you just care about being amongst, it's high school. You feel me? So if you care about being on the inside, and rubbing shoulders and playing the game and doing that whole shit with the industry and getting paired up with this person standing and doing all that, you know what I mean? And a lot of the award shows, they're just gonna reward, um, you know, yeah. major label artists. Like if you care about shit like that, then yeah, that's the advantage. So you're, once you're with the major label, you're in the game. You're in that ecosystem of the industry. So if you don't care though about playing the game, like I, I had a line where I said, uh, the only way to beat the game is don't play it, basically, is what I said. And it's like, mm -hmm. because you'll drive yourself crazy trying to play the game because the game requires you to do some things where you gotta maybe put your integrity to the side 
and, and, and fake the funk a little bit for the sake of playing the game, like, and, and, and for the sake of politicking and whatever. But to me, I don't know, man. Like, that's a, that's an everyday struggle for me where I'm like, I'm like, no well, pun intended. Shout out to Joe Budden. But, but it's like, it's an it's a everyday struggle yeah. of being like, damn, I, wa- I want the... I want to play the game without playing it. I want all the accolades. I want all this, but I'm not down to sell my soul for it. So then you you get into this dilemma of like, well, shit, which, what, what's it going to be? But I always, I have those thoughts, but then I come right back to myself and I keep rocking out, doing my own thing. So the only advantage that major label artists have over me is that they're more amongst, they're more in the game, and they're in the industry. So they're going to get the industry looks. You feel Do me? You I may they, not they, get certain industry looks. So yeah. Do they, not a, they don't have a ahead. financial advantage over you. Hell no. Hell no. I have a financial advantage over them. So they have they have no financial you, advantage. You know for a fact that most of these in the most of these artists who are signed to labels right now, you're walking around with more money mm-hmm. in the bank, better financial structure than ninety percent of them. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Because the reality is 100%. like they they're living check to check. They get, well, I'm not saying I'm doing better than 100% of them. I'm saying it's a 100% no, I know what you fact mean. that I'm yeah, doing yeah. better than most. Yeah, yeah, because you got to think, they're living uh, semi-annually, you feel me? They're getting two checks a year from the label, and that's if they're recouped. If not, they're just living advance to advance, you know? So it's tough, man. But nowadays, you know, labels are giving big bags. So, like, yeah, they might give you 10 mil, but it's like you may not see another check, though, for two years from the label. You know, and then you go do, you got to just do these very uh, uh, ex- exploitive deals <laughs> that, like, you get fucked, but you get a big bag. But, I mean, I don't know, man. Yeah, I know I, for me, I'm going to eat forever. I'm going to win forever. I don't have to, I don't have to, like, right now, I don't have to tour. I don't have to do any of these things. And I'm pulling in, you know, high, uh, high six figures a month just off my tune core, you know what I'm saying? Just off the independent catalog, only on the master side. We're not even talking the publishing side, we're not talking about mechanical royalties, you know, BMI, ASCAP, all that, so it's like, nah, these people, these people, the labels have them by their balls, you feel me? And that's not being a boss. I was having this conversation the other day. What I think is, the this is probably gonna get me fucking slander, but whatever the fuck, it's, who cares? Uh, I think the boss narrative in hip hop needs to really be analyzed because <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. how are you a boss if you have, if, if, how are you a boss if you have to wait and call a CEO for a check? And yo, where's my money? Like, Kanye I just said don't know line. what's boss. Like, you, it's Kanye like you don't own your like music. So like, what yeah. are you, like, I think people have just attributed being a boss to like, oh, you have money. I just don't think that that's what makes you a boss. I think what makes you a boss is that, like, you can't get fired. You own your shit. You own all your shit. Like, you're the boss. Like, I don't know. These artists are not boss. Like, they have their music owned by a label, and they get paid money for letting them use it. It's like, I don't know. Artists really need to just go to a bank. You feel me? Just go to the bank and get a loan with a way better interest rate. I've been saying that for years. When I explain the music I don't get it. When I explain the mm-hmm. artist side of the music business to sil- companies in Silicon Valley or just mostly other industries, they're in shock that this goes on. Today. Yeah. I mean, they, they, right. they think I'm making right. up something. I'm like, no, no, you really go and you take that money up front and in return, you rent your name and your image back for a yeah. royalty. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it works out at the end. And like, that's the industry. <laughs> right. But there's been this big change and this boom in independence. Like, people are saying it because mm-hmm. it's cool. So, l- what labels are doing yeah. are setting up companies like Caroline and, you know, Sony, your yeah. former label, bought AWOL. Sony bought a company called yeah. Artists Without a Label, which. <laughs> I mean, how does that make any sense? I'm trying to ask you. <laughs> I, it doesn't make any sense. But it's because you know what it is. It's like, it's the perception. That's what's like, that's what they love. They love the perception of independence because they know that people will root for that. People like, 
people want to see the underdog win. And if you're independent, you're slightly an underdog just because you don't have the machine in the industry. Perception wise, you're an underdog, you know? So So the label so the labels are setting uh, yeah, up I mean, these companies that they already have, uh, uh either taking brands that they already own and then turning them into independent mm -hmm. or buying companies like AWOL and saying they're independent. And you and I both know that's nothing more than them disguising the independence as something right. other than, yeah, right. it's not true. They're obfuscating the fact that you're signed to a label <laughs> through this independent thing. And, and the labels are doing it to get market share. They're doing it to look bigger than they really mm -hmm. are. But I'm starting to believe that artists are Let, learning. Can, can, can we, yeah. not, to cut you, not to cut you off, can we talk about how this whole game is run by market share? Can we talk about how the whole game is run by like a CEO wanting a bonus at the end of the year if they if they are winning in the market share? Yeah, you know what I'm it's saying? A, it's, a, it's it's, oh, it's yeah. really nobody understands. It's kind of nuts. A very like, hard, it's a very hard thing to explain because it really doesn't make much yeah. sense. But I'll do my best no. to explain it. Please. So you put all the all the labels are out there fighting for market share. You know if you. You know, I own, mm -hmm. you know, 16% of the market. I own 17.1% of the market. So they'll grab mm -hmm. distribution to go through them so they can continue mm -hmm. to accrue market share, even if that market share is not necessarily connected to profits. They want the mm -hmm. market share growth, not necessarily the profits yes. associated with that market share because they're all incentivized or most of them are incentivized based off of where they sit in the market and that turns into a thing called LTIP, you know, or some other performance-based metric that gives them money. So they'll do anything for market share. Then there's another dirty yeah. secret that takes place, which is where this black box of all this unclaimed money goes. You know, forms that were yes. never filled out, artists that never got paid, but the songs were streamed, goes into this sort of black box. And that black box, how that money gets distributed over time, is based off of market share. So all this right. unclaimed money gets then dispersed over time because of your market share. Based off so market share. It's, You're right. Which has nothing to do with the truth, right? Um, no. So market share is completely... Uh, it's, it's a metric that works for the employee. It's certainly not a metric I think that works well as the owner of a company such as myself. But I do believe over time, it's like musical chairs, but there's more people playing in the mm -hmm. chairs. <laughs> it's like 10 people playing with five chairs. Right. <laughs> and then 11 people play right. with four chairs. <laughs> right. It's like there's more people coming, but there's less right, chairs. Right, right, right. Um, it's a very bad game. Right, right. Um, but this yeah. boom in independence, we're seeing it now. I, I believe it. Artists want to be independent. They want to be the underdog. Do you believe that your message is resonating? Because I believe the reason why you and I have the connection is we both stand for the same values as it relates to this industry and sort of breaking up this monopoly that the, of perception that the labels have that yeah. they're dominant and being independent is a cottage industry for broke artists. I feel like there's a yeah. shift happening. Um, and I accredit a I lot agree. of that shift to what you've done, um, to the work that we at United Masters have done. I think what Brett Fires is doing is dope. Uh, Toby Nigui, what he's doing is dope. Like, I'm seeing it. Do, are you seeing it as well? Yeah. I am, and you know what I've realized? Is that time has to pass. Time has to pass because what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a new wave of artists that come in and they're all independent. And how I know that is because I was having and asking myself the same questions like, are people getting this message? Like, I don't know, are people, is it resonating with the artists? And over the past six to eight months, I just like, I just been hitting up so many up and coming artists just that, like if I see a song 
on Instagram and I just fuck with it. I'll just DM the artist. I'll call the artist and be like, yo, it's fire, da 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 and, I, and I've done that throughout the course of my career, but I've really done it more over the past eight months or so. And it's the same story every time. When I hit them up, it's, it's, it's always, oh, fuck, bro, I've watched so many of your interviews and how you do the independent thing, and it's so inspiring. Like, and, and I find myself giving them advice and mm-hmm. then kind of taking on mm-hmm. this uh, silent mentor role, which I love. Um, but it lets me know that the message is resonating and that time is just going to have to pass so that, you know what, in five years when there's a whole batch of new artists that are popping, hopefully they have a little bit of, you know, the blueprints we've laid uh, ingrained in their method, you know. So hopefully they maintain the independence because, I, like I said, when I hit them up on, I find an artist on TikTok, I find an artist on Instagram, it's... I hit him and they're like, yeah, man, I'm trying to do this independent thing too. You're, you're a big inspiration. I watch your interviews. I'm like, all right, cool. So it is resonating. Time's got to pass so that they blow you, up in the so world sees. You, you know? got all this money coming in. You get paid monthly. How do you, just financial um, education, like how do I spend my money? How do I save my money? Where is that coming from? Is that something that you, you seek outside guidance from? Mm-hmm. It, came, it comes natural to you? Do you have like a business manager you rely on. I'm just asking you that question because a lot of artists are independent and then they figure out, okay, I got the money coming in. What am I going to do next? How am I going to, mm-hmm. you know, not fuck this up? A, a bit of it came natural to me. Um, I was always really good with numbers and math was my favorite subject. So like, I don't mind looking at numbers. Uh, some people like it freaks them out. Some artists it scares them. But I don't. I like looking at numbers. Not even I don't mind it. So a lot of it came natural to me. But I got a business manager early on. You know what I mean? That I that I trust, and I ask them questions. Like I'm someone who I'm trying to figure out everything. I'm trying to know every aspect of the business. I ask my lawyer questions about the legal side of things. So um, you know, it's it's. I try to tell artists that. You're the one running the ship. You're, 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 this is your show. Everyone else works for you. So don't get it twisted in thinking that, like there's artists who their managers get paid. Like the money goes to their manager's accounts and then the manager pays the artist. It's like, you realize your manager works for you, right? <laughs> like the money should be going to you. So. It's, it's this very like backseat uh, position that a lot of artists take. And my whole thing is like, look, everyone around you works for you. Use them as resources, ask I questions, so. and never get it fucked up. They're replaceable. You're not. You know, you're, you're you. You're the artist. No. So I'm sorry. I, incur- I, didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. This is right. How do you feel about artists? I have a strong point of view on this. Let me just say it first. When, <laughs> yeah, this is tough. <laughs> when the Italians was trying to sell drugs in Harlem, they knew they couldn't get into the neighborhood. So they recruited all the guys in Harlem and fronted them the drugs mm. so that they could sell drugs to their own people. Mm. Right? So they couldn't, sell them, they couldn't sell the drugs directly to black people. They went through third parties and they, and they broke mm. them up 50-50. I start, I'm starting to feel like production companies mm. are becoming extensions of the labels mm evil ways, that the production companies are signing artists to deals that are as, that are as predatory as label deals. And I want to ask you, how do you feel about pro- production companies, so, you know, small labels, <laughs> right, yeah. signing these artists to deals, but the production company owns the masses and then services it back to the labels? Right, so Universal can't do it directly no more, so they do it through a third party, and then that third party secures the artist, and then they go 50-50 with that production company with the label. Do you see that? Do you know, do you, you know at all what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, no, so the production company, what's the no, premise of that deal? Is this an no, independent label who's no, gonna upstream they're, they're, you to no, the major a label? Company that's what you're saying? That's found the artist, and said, what we're going to do is, you know, sign to me all these yeah. rights, 360 rights, whatever it is, and then they go to Universal or go to Sony and yeah. then give them 50% of it, and then the label looks like they're doing... And do the JV. Yeah. 
The JV. I think that shit is insane. I know now I know what you're talking about. I think that shit is insane. And I think and I think people need to stop saying they're, they're independent if you're signed to someone who's signed to a major label. You're not independent. And I just think it's also fucking that's not even the real point. The point is that it's insane that it's almost like the Trojan horse shit where they come covert as this independent thing, like they're really trying to look out for you, the but labels. they're really offering yes. the same, if not worse, deals than the major labels, and it's fucked up. And then they're going and getting with you, and then, and then they're going and getting with Sony anyway, and doing a yeah, JV, but- and now you got sixty-eight people in your pocket anyway. So it's like, nah. When I see when I see people who are signed to someone who signed to someone who signed to a label, dog, good luck, good luck. The second you you pull your head out of your ass. There's going to be a fight on your Twitter. <laughs> Good luck. You feel me? Good luck, bro. <laughs> well, I thought, I listen, I, I always look at, I look at that as black on black crime. Like, you're going to take this kid, sign this kid to a bad deal, and then turn around and then, like, do the work of the major mm-hmm. label by taking half this kid's shit or taking 100% of this kid's shit because you can come under the right. guide of looking like you are going to do right by him or it's independent and it's y'all going to lock and do lock in and do that's bullshit. Um, right. Do you think there's a, that artists can come together and change the business? That, that, mm-hmm. that that's a reality that can come where a group of artists come together and decide that they want to change the business. I'm not saying form a union. But really come together and say, man, fuck this shit. Fuck we need these dudes for. Yeah, I mean, like we talked about it last time. It it starts at the top, you know? It starts at the top. And if the bigger guys kind of were like, what the fuck do we need a label for? And they went indie. I mean, when you talk about that market share and things like that, you know... Mm -hmm. Drake, as an independent artist, would would own a lot of the market share. Would probably own more than major labels just himself, you know. So it's like, um, yeah, man, it's, it it starts at the top. It starts at the top. But once again, you you know, you're dealing with people who, from the inception of their career, they've relied on a machine. They've relied on delivering their music and other people pushing buttons for them and doing these things. So they feel like. They don't know how to survive in the wild, which is why I wrote the chapter on my book, Do It Myself. It's called Survive in the Wild. It's like a lot of artists don't know how to survive in the wild. They, they came up in the machine. They came up in the industry. So they don't, they don't have any clue. But they don't, it, it's sad because they're not even aware of their own power. They're not even aware of how doable this shit is. And I don't know, man. Like I said, I, I take responsibility for this independent movement because I'm just going to show people that whatever you think you can't do independent, I'm just going to do it to show you that, oh, shit, well, if Russ is doing it, fuck Russ, I can do this shit then. <laughs> you know if what I mean? If they say, fuck Russ, I can do it then, you feel good about it. They can say, fuck Russ all day as long as they're doing something that's going to better themselves as a result. Do it. Yeah. All day, man. Like, <laughs> if you're inspired, rock out, man. <laughs> Who do you admire rock outside out. the music business? Um, wow. What a great question. Uh, I really like Damian Lillard a lot. I fuck with Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. That's just the first name that came his to my mind. His <laughs> mentality. Damian Lillard. I just like his mentality. I like the way he plays. I like the fact... His mentality is so fire to me. And the fact that he's like... He raps mm-hmm. for real on the side. Like, he was in the bubble with the studio in the hotel room. You know what I mean? Like, that shit is fire to me. Like, you could just... And just the way he plays. I don't know. I just... And, and he's he's a bit of an underdog. People don't really uh, uh, give him that credit. I don't know. I, I, I guess I feel like I, I relate with him a lot. And, and his whole um, brand kind of resonates with me. So... Have you ever met him? I never met Have him. I talked to him a bunch. Of, nah, he's, I never met him. But I talked to him a bunch of times. He's, he's, he's so he's, fire. He's dope. Crazy, crazy. So yeah, people like that inspire me. Like athletes inspire me. Another mm. one is another one is uh, Trey Young, man. Trey Young inspires me. Trey Young just be fucking like fuck what all of y'all talking about. I'm putting yeah. up thirty. I'm putting up forty. Like what are y'all talking about? You know what I mean? Like that's why I love sports, and I wish there was something like that in in 
in rap, but there's not because the numbers can be manipulated. But it's like sports is so finite and definitive. It's like, yeah. no, we beat y'all. <laughs> it's like, I beat you. I scored 50. You can't, mm-hmm. like, the numbers aren't manipulated. The ball went in the basket. You feel me? Like, I don't know. I, I love, I lo- that's why I love basketball and I love sports because you could put a number on it. Like, I don't give a fuck if you're most hated or whatever. If I'm averaging 30 and 10 a game, yeah. I'm getting a big ass bag and I'm winning a ring. You feel me? So talk about it amongst yourselves. Well, <laughs> you yeah, can't stop it. Yeah, in, you in, in, sports, if you, in sports, if you perform, you have an opportunity to get what you deserve. Because but you know, there's you, no you know, interpretation you, of your personality. Right. Because you know, what's, you know what's so interesting with music versus sports? Music and your success in music is heavily predicated on how much people like you. That's the reality. The reality is that you could hate Kevin Durant all you want. That's not going to stop him from scoring 30 and it's not going to stop him from getting a contract. Yeah. yeah. NBA executives don't care if you don't like him. You know what I'm saying? It's like, he's going to do really well. So we're giving him money and like, that's what it is. In music, it's like, if the public decides we don't like you, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It doesn't matter about, you know, your music or your sales or your stuff. And I've experienced that where it's like, I've felt those waves of like, damn, people just like damn near fucking creating these fake ass smear campaigns, what the shit feels like. And it's like, that's everything in music because the whole shit is based off how, how much people fuck with you. It's based off do people like you. Put, you, you know how like uh, jersey sales is a, is a metric in sports. All yeah. of music is jersey sales. <laughs> you feel me? Like music is literally jersey sales in terms of like, do people like you? Are you popular amongst the people? That's all music is. If you're popular amongst the people, it doesn't matter if you're actually good. You know what I'm saying? What, what's his name? Um, not saying he's not good. Bo Bo, super tall dude on the Celtics. Is that Bo Bo or is it someone else? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, but yeah, Taco, Taco. Taco, Taco Fall, Taco, not Bo Taco. Bo. Taco Fall. Taco didn't yeah. even really play, and he got more yeah. all-star votes than, like, so many fucking people because the people vote. That's how music is, though. Music is like, if we get behind you, it doesn't matter what your abilities are, we fuck with you as a rap, and vice versa. It doesn't matter what your stats are in music, if we don't fuck with you, we don't fuck with you, but that whole we don't fuck with you or we do fuck with you is so easily manipulated by blogs and smear campaigns and nonsense and bullshit. So that's what's, that's what's tricky, man. I wish there was a finite thing like that, but... I wish so too. There's the other thing is you got these stupid ass fucking managers who are haters, who get in the middle of fucking shit up. Listen, this is a very funny story. So <laughs> I'm building United Masters, yeah. and I'm fucking around with, um, with Chance, Chance the Rapper. Mm-hmm. And his manager, literally, and I know y'all had some shit, whatever. His manager yeah. literally tells him, mm-hmm. don't fuck with Steve because whatever fucking excuse he makes, and then goes out and signs a label deal with Warner Brothers. And then in the middle of the lawsuit, the first thing Chance puts in the lawsuit, because this put us out there, was he suing the manager because the manager told him not to do a deal with United Masters and he could have caught a bag. And I'm sitting there going, he said this works. You knew he was stupid? <laughs> but decided to listen to him anyway. <laughs> and yeah, like, that's tough. like it's, it's, that's it's tough. like, but, but it's the same thing. The manager could sit there and run a smear campaign on the, on me. Just say the same way you just said somebody could run a smear campaign on you as an artist. The manager could run a smear campaign on me and yeah. the artist who's super talented and has the right intention could get, brain dumb the fuck out because they have the person that they're relying on who's a hater and has ulterior motives. And I think that part of the music is in sports, the ball still goes in the basket right. no matter what that motherfucker says. Your agent can say a bunch of dumb shit. Doesn't stop you from shooting the ball. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's just a horrible, right. it's a horrible. Right. Right. But you know, it's, it's so true though, because 
it's so true because there's people that are in artist corners that they have known for years and they trust. And so whatever they say is gold and they believe it and they trust it and they'll run through a wall. Oh my God. And it's like, nah, oh man. And I've God. seen artists who get fucked up mentally by people that they trust who haters. are haters though. Like people that they trust who are haters and have now no, no. breeded this They're insecurity. They're jealous, become jealous stuff. of them. It's crazy. They don't. It's crazy. It's like, yo, you got to fire these people. But it's like, it's like, nah, I've known. Of course. Well, because most people in the music business who aren't artists wanted to be either an artist or a producer or something. So a lot of times there's a bitterness and, and, and the real ones can check it and, and recognize and play their role and be fine and have no ego. But every once I, in a while you run into people I, artists, who are bitter and who are jealous. So it's like, you know, but if that's well, someone that you've trusted for well, 10 years, it's, it's going to fuck them, you up. When you don't have shit, it's much different than when you have shit. The stakes just went up. Now you got, now there's real money. There's not theoretical money on the table. Yeah. There's real cash in yeah. the bank now. There's real business decisions that got to yeah. be made, right? And when the stakes get higher, you yeah. start seeing all that shit yeah. come out. The grass get cut, and then you see the snake come out. For artists to be businesses, the thing that I've seen in my 25 years mm -hmm. in the business, is for artists to be businesses, the first thing they got to do is be confident in their decisions. They got to be able to make decisions that are real business decisions, not these emotional decisions. Yeah. You got to make, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just like sports, very binary, very uh, decisions that are based off of yeah. an outcome that is informed by the reality that changes every day, every quarter, every year. That's how you run a business. You know? Yeah. Um, radio doesn't mean shit. Fuck radio. Doesn't matter. Not fuck radio. Does it matter? Yes or no? Yeah. I okay. don't, I won't, I, yeah, radio matters. Radio matters. Radio matters. Radio matters. Um, Do you need a label to get radio? Radio's still a big player. The Shazams, the... Dis Do you need a label to get radio? No, you don't. You need two people, if that. Mm -hmm. You need money and two people. That's to it. To get radio. You figured that out. That's it. That's it. I figured that that was the, that was the last code to crack. <laughs> and I... I got this person and I got this I got this person for urban radio, I got this person for rhythm radio. And here's 30 grand, here's 30 what grand. Are, That's what, what it costs the, to impact the song. And then if I want to run it so, up, here's 150k. So the money, so the money just so that everybody's clear, <laughs> I'm going to say it is not for their services. <laughs> it's for them to hire people at the radio station to incentivize the radio station to play. It. <laughs> that still goes on to this day, okay? That's all I have to say about that topic. Um, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Um, yeah. Merch business. You've been trying different things on merch. What are you learning? Uh, I'm learning that it's sort of like songs, which is the more you do it, the more you share it, the more people consume it. So when I post merch, mm -hmm. I sell more. When I mm -hmm. don't, I sell less. It's as simple as that. You feel me? It's as simple as that. The more you post your merch, the more sales you'll get. The more you post your songs, the more streams you'll get. It's a beautiful business in that sense. You know, you don't get the credit for what you're doing. Um, first of all, what you've done from a charitable perspective. Um, you did You did something. You, you helped one of my friends out. Um, in LA as a store, apartment 4B. I, I was shocked you knew the brand. Yeah. Yeah. And you you put you put the bag out, you did that, you just put up a half a million dollars, you raised a half a million dollars, what you're doing with Mar in, the, in the cannabis business. That side of Russ, do you care that you get credit for that side? Or it's like, you just do it and it's like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't see it, it's your problem. Um. It's going to sound... It, and, 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 like, don't be brash no, about no, no, no. this. You do a lot of good yeah. shit. Um, I think everyone wishes they got a little bit more credit. That's the ego, though, you know? But for me, to be honest, like, I just feel like it's the absolute least and right thing to do considering I'm a white person benefiting off of black culture. 
and I've always said that, and I'm gonna always say it. Like, I'm a white person making money off of black culture, so for me to not use that same platform that I've gotten via black culture, for me to not use it to put money back into black culture or help people within that culture out, I just think it's crazy to me. And I think that people don't hold other white artists accountable for that. That's what, that's what trips me out. It's not even the, like, I need more credit. It's more like, how are y'all okay with other white artists not, like, giving back to black culture when they're making money off of black culture? That's the shit that trips me out. Not, yo, I need more credit. It's like, know, how are y'all not holding some of these people accountable? That's yeah. the definition of culture vulture. You came in, used the culture, and dipped and didn't even fucking leave behind a crumb. I don't even understand that. It feels like everybody's just trying to get the bag right now, and they're so focused on that one, let's go get the bag, they worried about themselves, that it's every man for himself, that it's not even looking at the culture vulture mm -hmm. and going, well, by the way, I feel the same thing about the, the black guy, right? So the black guy who goes up to that young kid and takes all of his publishing, and takes all of his shit, and then sells it to a record company, He's a culture vulture as well, right? Like he's taking it because he can get in the culture because he's an African-American who's down with the, yeah, on the mm -hmm. block and then going out to L.A. or coming up to New York or whatever the record company is and then, you know, breaking it up with the guy who would never even leave his house to go down that block or give a fuck about this kid or the culture. But he has a, he has a getaway driver, yeah. which is this guy, you know, who sits in between, and I think that shit is real fucking corny. Yeah, well, and it's so sad. It's, it, well, it's just, it's sad because what you're explaining is somebody who's covert. I'm always mm -hmm. just like, be open mm -hmm. about your piece of shitness. If you're gonna be a piece of shit, just be, be overt about it. The ones who are covert and they kind of like, you know, they come in disguise. I wrote a line one time, devils come in disguise is everything you prayed for. It's like, that's when it's tough. When the devil appears as a blessing that you prayed for, that's when it's hard to really differentiate like, nah, wait a second, this person is really actually a piece of shit. And those are the ones who are really oh, actually really evil. Because it's like, you, you really did the okie doke and fucking, uh, it's, it's tough, man. That shit is really, really sad. And, and, and my, whole, my whole fucking message for just, all the artists, it's not for me to shit on y'all and to be like, I'm better than y'all, y'all are fucking da 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 but, but at the same time, we're in rap and everyone brags, so my brag shouldn't offend anyone. Unless it actually hurts you, then it's true. But my whole message is like, y'all have, so, have so much more power than you think, and y'all have so much more abilities than y'all think. Y'all are superstars, y'all have fans, y'all have... Y'all are full-fledged businesses that are so lucrative to the point that massive corporations, Pepsi, Sprite, Coke, they all want to fuck with y'all. So it's like, they're only fucking with y'all because they know that that's how valuable you are. And it's like, I just wish artists understood that they're so much more valuable than they give themselves credit for. And they attribute all their success to other people. And it blows my mind. It's like, if that's the case... If that's the case, tell them to go and make another one of you. But they can't. You feel me? They can't. Not if you're one of the ones. With all these artists now selling their catalogs, you're seeing this. Yeah. It's, it's a boom now, right? The artists selling their catalogs. Um, what's your end goal with, with owning all your material? Is it something you want to take with you forever? Do you, does it make sense when you see an artist selling their catalog? Do you go, that's fucking corny? Or do you go, there is a price. And if you don't, and you don't even have to answer that question. If I like, want to answer, I want to answer, I want to answer because it's relevant. Because I just got that call two days ago about <laughs> <laughs> for real. I did, and yeah, yeah. it was yeah. like you because you know what those numbers are. It's like multiples of twenty. You feel me? So it's 25, 20, 25. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's yeah. crazy numbers, like nine figures. You know what I'm saying? And all I say, all I text my manager saying was, let me know mm -hmm. the exact number so I can rap about that I turned that down. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I just wanted to know the number so I can know what I can rap about what I turned down. You feel me? I'm not selling my catalog for shit. Y'all can suck my dick. Y'all are out of your fucking mind. Because guess what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, 
on a principle, if I don't have that, if I don't have my integrity and if I don't have my creations and I'm really putting the money over that, then what am I? I think I'm, I think I'm lousy. I think I'm not shit. Yo, I, this guy, this guy is the best. You, you, yo, you, there's, that's how I feel. Somebody told me one time, Steve, you care about respect over money. That's the truth. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to get, of course I do. Of course I do. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, a hundred percent. You gotta look. There's mirrors. You gotta look in the mirror, man. I don't know how you live in a house with no mirrors. Guess. Oh, I have. I mean, I have just paintings of myself everywhere instead. <laughs> no, but guess who? Guess, <laughs> but it's actually true. I'm like, how does the Uber Eats guy know it's my house? I'm like, he looked in your front door, asshole, and saw six portraits of you. You fucking maniac. No, but it's like the reality, the, the reality is you need to watch out for the guy who will put money over respect. That's someone, stay away from me. Stay away from me. Because you're a wild card. You're a wild card. You're, you're liable to do fucking anything. I'm cool on that. Stay, stay away from me, please. Anything. 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 I, 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 I agree with you. You know, when I was building the company... Everybody was like, why are you attacking the labels? I'm like, why am I attacking the labels? Why am I attacking something that's clearly a usury model that was running a monopoly for many, many years and predatory? Why, was I, why am I doing that? You have a problem with that because that's the richest person you know. Mm. The, 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 the person in the record business mm -hmm. is the richest person you know. You think that's where you're <laughs> going to get the bag from. I don't care about them. Now, I was at a record company. So I went through it 25 years ago to see crazy shit. When I first met Daniel Eck, we were at a conference. We were in Italy. And I didn't, you know, I know he was obviously the founder of Spotify. And I said to him, we were drinking and shit, what's the worst thing you've ever seen in a record business? And he told his story, and it was. I mean, fucking terrible. I mean, it was, it was like an artist that was dying, but before they died, mm -hmm. their greatest hits shit was already packaged, ready to go by the record company. Like, they was like, just counting down, like I mean. ready to hit, like drop, it, like time it perfectly. And I seen some crazy shit where, you know, they were just charging artists back for music videos. Like coming up in my era, you seen all these great music videos. Oh, yeah. Believe me, that was coming out yeah. the artist's rectum. Million dollar hype, William dollar videos was coming out of their rectum. Like they thought, like, they, like you look good, you right. felt good, you smell right. good, great. You were getting pimped. <laughs> they just gave you a car and, 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 a, and a, a nice outfit uh, and put you out on the block. Uh, and you were paying for those music videos yourself. It, it, and, I, and I seen the numbers and I was really, that's when I, that's when I started to change. Yeah. I was like, this is crazy. You can never make money. <laughs> right. right. Like I knew it was impossible to make money. Yeah. Impossible. You know, um, the guys who had it right, um, forget the business that they did. Like when I, you know, the cash money, Baby and Slim, I met them early in their career. And um, they already had paid for a bunch of videos. And yeah, they, they walked in the door with like six artists. And Crazy. each artist had albums done with like five videos each. They had put up the money, you know. So I kind of got that. They walked in the door with that. They had everything done. Um, forget the deals with the artists. I'm not going to get into that. Rick Ross handled that. But the, 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 the fact that they, they had that already... They were investing in themselves. They believed in it. What the record companies were doing to the artists was just embarrassing. You know, making them pay everything. When I seen one clause where everything up to $100,000 was 50-50. What? Everything <laughs> over $100,000 was 100% the artist's cost. So if you shoot a million dollar hype, William dollar video, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is, this is signed... It, the lawyers who are in cahoots with all of this are allowing this to happen. Of course. So, artist shoots a million dollar video. Right. Nine fifty gets charged back to the artist. 
17%, 18% royalty, and the label pays 50000 There was another thing they used to do. I could tell you stories that are so fucked up, but it will age me, and it's not, it's not relevant today to what's happening. The same, same, same business tactics, um, new, new, new platforms. But same tactics, they're really good at taking advantage mm -hmm. of people who want the instant gratification of fame. But if you're willing to put the work in, not get addicted to when people scream your name out, you actually have a chance of beating the system. I also believe if you're an artist and you know you ain't really fucking talented and somebody's about to give you the bag, take it. <laughs> Facts. You know your days are numbered if anyway. Believe, if, if you don't believe in yourself, <laughs> yeah, you know your days are numbered anyway, just, just take the money. We're about to move very quickly into blockchain. Yeah. I think blockchain uh, is smart contracts mm -hmm. are extremely valuable, specifically in this business. And there's a profit margin in I've never met an artist, I'll put it this way. I've never met one artist that's ever ran an oh, audit I'm, against I'm their record company them right now. and wasn't owed money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh but like, you're supposed you're to. You're auditing Sony you're, right listen, now. Listen, listen. To any of the artists out there. Yeah. Y'all's labels get audited all day, every day. Because when you're dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars, there's errors and there's money missing, I promise you. So at the end of the day, it's not even on some like, it's not as fuck you, I don't trust you as it needs to be. It's really just like, nah, man, there was way too much money made over here and y'all got way too much shit going on. I know there's a fuck up. You feel me? And you're allowed to audit your label. That's in the contract. That's in the contract. Yeah. With blockchain... That's going to help the smart contracts and putting, con putting, art, uh, putting contracts on the, uh, on the blockchain will allow artists to get paid exactly what they're supposed to get paid, the producer get what they paid. So there's no misinterpretation. Um, and it wouldn't be this thing where auditing needed to ha happen regularly in order to make sure that you weren't getting robbed, which is why blockchain is probably specifically a valuable one, a valuable uh, uh, technology specifically for the music industry, since the interpretation of contracts seemed to be loosely understood, <laughs> yeah. depending on who was the last person you spoke to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, you, you know, United, we're, we're moving on to the blockchain. We're, we're, we're deeply, quickly moving fast to getting our artists on the blockchain because we want to make sure they get paid correctly and want to make sure that whether they want to get paid yeah. in cryptocurrency or, or PayPal, whatever it may be, that they get paid exactly what they're supposed to get paid in, 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 in a timely manner. You know, um, like, I, I, I just think that I, I don't even care about the outcome so much. Like, who had the hot hit record that went all the yeah. way is one thing. Yeah. But the fact that you stick yeah. to it, turn down the bags, turn down the offers. Like that discipline to yeah. do that makes you special. To be an independent artist, yeah. you have to turn down so much money mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. somebody's, the devil's always going to write the biggest check. <laughs> That's a bar. That's a bar. The devil's always going to write the biggest check. That's and you so have to real, turn man. that down That's every fact, single though. time. And you got to know that when we look back on all of this, we're going to look back on this interview and the only interviews that you've done, and we look back on all the people we just talked about. Yeah. That they're going to set the new mold on how the industry goes for the next 100 years. And I just want to tell you that you have been a cornerstone in shaping how the industry is going to move forward because of how defiant and how irrational you've been Thank about you. About being nothing but independent. That man, that means that means everything for real. Because I we we talk about it all the time, me and my close friends, and it's just I want to impact. That was my whole goal was respect and impact.
You know what I mean? And like, I think there's a lot of people who are entertainers and they're really good entertainers and they make party songs, they're in the club and that's cool. But I don't know if you're changing people's lives like that. I don't know if you're impacting the world like that. And I'm just glad that you know what? I may not have the most streams. I may not have the most this, the most that, but I feel like my- One billion, just past a billion. <laughs> that was just for last year. <laughs> 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 nah, but like I feel like I've really um I'm proud <laughs> I'm proud of I'm proud of the impact, man. Cause like I said, uh referencing back to what we were talking about earlier, when I talk to these up and coming artists and and their first thing that they say to me is, Man, I've watched so many of your interviews, like da 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 da. I'm like, I think the misconception with me is people think I think I'm better than everyone or whatever the fuck. Like, I'm trying to help every artist in the world. Like, I'm down to talk to every artist. Like, an artist that I know, for real, they they know. Like, hit me, ask me, everything. Like, I want to help with everything. And I may not have all the answers, but, like, at least I'm a soundboard and you can bounce the shit off. Like, I'm trying to make sure every artist is fucking up the industry and isn't a fucking, you know... Isn't isn't tied and and got and the industry's got their fucking balls in their hands like that shit is crazy to me, man. What like we're the ones that run this shit. Everyone else fucking works for us. You feel me? Like everything else, et, like we're the nucleus. Everything else is fucking just whatever. <laughs> that shit is whatever. And, and a lot of artists don't understand that. Look, you are the source. Mm -hmm. Your business manager can get replaced. Your manager can get replaced. You're the source. Don't let them fucking like that. That that pimp reference you you mentioned. It it's it's tough, but it it is really the truth, man. We we've talked about it in my close circle. Like when you really think about the relationship between record labels and artists, it's a very pimp hoe relationship. It's very like go out there and get that money and bring it back, and I'll let you know how much you get from it. And I'll let you know if you can leave, because we got you for two more albums. And we got the option, so I'll let you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really, really fucked up. It's really, really fucked up. So, man, yeah. I just encourage yeah. self-empowerment, man. That's it. That's it. So you saying those things, like, to me, I, like, I know that sometimes I beat myself up because I want... I want five years from now to be right now so I can really see the impact, or I want 10 years. Like, a part of me feels like I'm damn near chasing death on the low, not to even get morbid or anything, but because I'm like, that's when I know the real flowers come in and the real impact gets made, and it's sad, but I'm like, I'm like, is that what I'm chasing? Am I chasing? No, you did now. No, you're doing you it saying? now. You're doing it now. You're doing it now, bro. I know what you're talking about. You're doing it now. You really are doing it now. Yeah. You should write the second book. I seen somebody asking your yeah. live, are you writing the second book? You should write the artist manual. You should do that, man, because you you are getting your flowers. Same. You've done a wonderful job. I enjoy our Same, conversations man. Hell because yeah. I always Hell learn yeah. something when I talk to you. Thank right? you, man. We'll talk soon. Right, brother. Thank you so much, bro.